What's going on everybody? I'm Jeff Carpenter with Ready Light Media and Next Level Workshops. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to shoot this very reflective glass bottle with this light and this light and a few of these tabletop V-flats to stick around and check it out. Just to show you the entire process from start to finish, I went ahead and stripped this whole set. So, um, all of the stuff that was up there is no longer. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you just the entire process, again, from start to finish, and show you kind of why I'm doing things and maybe some tips and tricks. You'll notice I'm wearing these gloves. Um, I've just got a couple things. So the reason, I'll explain the gloves now. The reason I'm wearing the gloves is we're using, uh, dealing with a very, very reflective surface here and the, uh, it's very susceptible to fingerprints and stuff like that. So wearing the gloves, this is kind of an extra little help to help reduce that. Another thing I have is a um, little can of duster that's handy. So if I need to kind of just spray any dust spots away, I can do that. Another thing I have is this microfiber cloth. That's just to wipe up any, uh, you know, any, any fingerprints, any oil marks, anything like that. That's really more handy for when I am actually moving from one product to another. So I'm shooting, I think 10 or 12 different products all with the same material. So what I'll do is I'll, before I place the next bottle, I'll go ahead and wipe it really, really clean, make sure it doesn't have any oil marks on it, doesn't have any fingerprints, and then we can start moving on with the shoot. So what I wanna do is I've got a two light setup today. I've got this Profoto A2 with the Magnum click on there. What that Magnum reflector does just gives it a little extra oomph, a little extra power, so I can keep that power down a little bit and get a little more output from the light. So it just kind of magnifies that a little bit. And then I've got a B10 down here with just a bare head bounced into this white part of the uh, white part of the wall. And the reason why I have that is inevitably this shot will be clipped out to white or a transparent background. So this just allows us to pull that off of that background a little easier. The way we have it now, if I shot it with just a single light, it would be black bottle, black background, you would never be able to find the edges. So this just kind of helps us separate the bottle from the background. Um, so let's go ahead and I wanna take just one shot with uh, just this A2 up here, just the key light. And another thing I wanna show you too is, you can probably see from my screen right here is, I'm using Capture One, I'm using Live View. Normally when I'm shooting, my camera and my computer are in the same spot. But for this one, I have my camera over here on the Studio Titan America stand here. And I've got my computer over here. And the reason for that is that I wanna be able to see any minute movements in live, you know, in real time with the Live View. So if I, let's pretend I didn't have this bottle placed already, or I was switching to another product, I want to put it here. If I kind of, I can kind of see where it is. Another thing too is I like to wear a dark colored shirt because as you can see when I move around, the exposure changes on the live view. So if I wear a dark colored shirt, I can actually see it a little bit better. I can see the edges. I've also got, you'll notice I've got the grid lines on the, uh, on Capture One in the live view. And the nice thing about that, you can set any amount of grid lines you want. I just did the standard kind of, you know, nine quadrants. It's not a quadrant, because it's nine, whatever nine sections would be. And then I also did the kind of cross hatch down the middle as well. So that helps me. I know that in this product, the A is going to be the, uh, the center. And also this bottle is pretty much perfectly centered with the two vertical lines there. So I can go ahead and place that and get pretty darn close. I might need to tweak it just a little bit, but I can get really, really close without having to take a photo and go back and forth. That's one thing I really love about tethering, especially in Capture One here, is I can see that in real time. And then what I'll do is, if I wanna look a little bit closer, again, when you place something dark in behind it, it will increase that exposure a little bit. So I can kind of come in here and look really closely and see and make sure that everything's centered. It's pretty darn close. It could probably come this way, just a touch. Now that we've got the bottle placed in a really good position, we can go ahead and take our first test shot. So I'm just gonna be using this key light here. And one thing I wanna to touch on is I've got this Elgato Stream Deck that I've programmed focus and capture to trigger capture one. You don't have to do this. I just like having a physical button and since my camera 
is over there and I can't reach it and I would probably knock something over if I tried. I like just having this and I can kind of take a shot just with this. It kind of makes me feel like I'm playing a video game a little bit. But um, now we can go ahead and see what that test shot looks like. Remember how I mentioned I was gonna use a secondary light here? We'll come to that in just a second because that is really dark. It's very black. It's black on black on black. So let's go ahead and throw this second light in just to give some exposure to the background. And what this is gonna do, like I said, we're gonna be clipping this to pure white to use kind of as an e-commerce shot anyway. So this doesn't have to be pure white. I want this basically just to make it easier to separate this bottle from the background. And just like that, we're starting to get some separation. That'll be a lot easier for the editor to pull that off. Um, so this looks all right, but you know, it's, it's still pretty bland. Does in one big factor when shooting a product like this for a company is you want to be able to read the logo right now. All it says is give a D when really the product is called give a derm. So I want to make sure we can actually read that writing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use this kind of bifold. I think it's like an eight and a half by it's just a standard sheet of paper size. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this right there. We're gonna come back to this live view. And that's a pretty good shot. I'm, I've got this modeling light on so I can, I can kind of see what that is gonna be doing. So that brings me to the point of if you want a thinner line, we're gonna go ahead and pull this further away. You can see how that kind of changes the, the width of that reflection. So we'll take, let's, Let's take a shot there. So we've got that reflection it's starting to give some depth, some dimension to the bottle while also retaining that glass look. But I want it to be a little bit softer. And also one thing you have to think about with anything like using a reflective surface you've told me to talk about in the V flat videos before is when you're using it and you're using like the white side, proximity is key. So the closer you have it to the bottle, the more, or your subject, in this case it's the bottle, the more reflect, you know, the more exposure you're gonna get. So I move that pretty far away. So it's a pretty subtle, you know, it's a pretty subtle line there. I'm gonna bring this in though, probably to about there. I think that's pretty good. It's gonna, it kind of splits the dash there. And I think that's pretty good. So. Now we're starting to get it kind of where I think it's looking pretty good. So all of the words are, are visible, everything's looking good. Um, one thing that I'm noticing though is this edge on the right hand side is just a little bit soft. It would be a lot more noticeable if I did make this pure white. So let's just go ahead and do that just so this it becomes a little more noticeable. Okay, so we've got this edge here. It looks all right, but I want to kind of sharpen that edge a little bit. So what, and, and the reason why that is happening is kind of, basically it's hitting this wall a lot of white space over here, right? So it's hitting this wall, bouncing, and then that is kind of illuminating this back edge of this bottle. So all I have to do to, you know, to mitigate that is bring in a, another one of these kind of bifolds, but this one is black, so that's gonna reduce and that's gonna kill any reflections. Let's just make sure it's not completely in the shot, which it definitely was, but let's start there. I think that's a pretty good spot. So let's come back to here and we'll be able to see this kind of in real time. And notice how much more crisp that edge is. And that's just because I'm, I'm kind of stopping any of that reflection from this back area from hitting this bottle. And so that's looking pretty good. So one thing that I want to point out though, is you can probably see it right here. Well, you can see my video light and you can see if we take a nice shot here, You can see me waving, right? So we don't want to be able to see me in the reflection. So all we're doing here is we're really, really focusing on kind of reducing or eliminating reflections altogether while still keeping that glossy look, you know, of, of a glass bottle. So what I want to do is I want to put up this 
it's just a, another black. This is the bifold, the larger of the bifolds. And I'm going to do this. All that's doing is basically that's giving me a little barrier here. So I'm, you won't be able to see me. So, so now we've got, there's still some reflections up here. Again, when I actually took this photo, I didn't have a giant video light right here. So that's one reflection that we're going to have to deal with, but we'll deal with that later. And that doesn't really apply if you're not shooting a video. So now that we've got everything kind of set up and one other, two other things I wanted to talk about is this um, trifold here. That's just here to block off this softbox that I've got hanging on my wall. And then I've got another one back here behind the camera. So when I was shooting this earlier in the day, I've got my garage door back there and it was lit up. So I just wanted to reduce any kind of, basically I've created a big old box around this and that's helping us kind of reduce those reflections. So any reflections we have are ones that we create and ones that we want there. So it's looking pretty good. And remember I talked about how I had black on the bottom and the reason why I chose to go with a black, uh, like a black surface as kind of the ground surface is because if I use white, um, let me grab one over here. All right, so if I use white and I'm just gonna put this up here, I'm gonna show you how easy this is to make sure it's right back in the right spot again though. So we're back in our live view. I think that's pretty good. So look at the bottom of this image and then you tell me why we chose to use black. That's just kind of a blurry mess of, of reflection. So by pulling this away, getting rid of that all together, throw it right there. We go back to the, and again, if I was not going to clip this to white in general, I do like that kind of white background. I think it looks cool, like the white floor. But again, I know the purpose of this shot and I know that I'm not going to keep that. So I want to have the bottle as clean as possible. Let's just put this right here. Check it, make sure we're all straight. And focus and capture and my arms in it, but it's okay. But now if we look at the two here, just looking at the bottom of this, the bottom of the one with the black, you know, it's just a lot more deeper, darker. It kind of draws your eye a little more into the logo itself rather than the reflections on the bottom. Again, I think the one on the left is actually a cool looking shot. But for this, we really just kind of want to focus on the bottle itself again, because we are clipping that out. All right, so that pretty much covers everything in the realm of reflections and, and using kind of flags and, and reflectors to get the shot we want. Um, one thing I do want to talk about is just the light placement. So I had my light placed already. I knew I wanted it kind of high, but let's go and bring this down. And I've got this modeling light so I can kind of see where it's going to fall. And if I put this about there, so what's going to happen is we're going to start getting kind of that bottom reflection again. And it doesn't look bad necessarily, but you know, it's not necessarily how I want it. So we're going to go and bring it back up. And this is kind of personal preference. If you want it like that, you want kind of those longer lines that totally works. But for me, I kind of want to keep it right about here. So with anything, a lot of, especially when shooting with, with minimal lighting, but a lot of reflectors and stuff, it's a give and take. Everything is going to be kind of a, a give a little, take a little, you know, there's never one perfect situation, but I hope this video helped you out. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those below. And if you want to find out more about me or any of my work, follow me on Instagram at ready light media over on nextlevelworkshops.com. If you want to come to one of my workshops, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those below and I'll talk to you later.